So two is not a solid feed. Um, if you sign in on the sheet that they have, there's like a sign-up sheet. Um, and I, I'm going to take a look around too, just make sure that I'm everybody.
side of the next slide are taken from a biometric screening. Do you guys know what a biometric screening is? It's health results, okay? Yes. On the left side is health results that were taken from July of 2013, and on the right side are test results from a health coaching visit that were taken five years later in September of 2018, okay? So let's take a look at these. So left side was taken from this one employee in 2013, and right side was 2018. So you can see that some were blood pressure, their pulse, respirations, oxygen sat, height, weight, and BMI. Notice some of the differences in those five years. Feel free to call them out once you see them. Yes? They got fatter. Definitely. How did you notice that? Well, in 2018, they weighed 251. In 2013, they weighed 127. 141 was, or 147 was their weight in 2013, and their weight went up over five years to 251. Okay. What else do you see? Somebody want to raise their hand? Yes. Go ahead. Their blood pressure is really high. Their blood pressure went up. By how much? By 22. Yeah. That's not good, is it? Somebody else? Yes, I Yes. Your BMI. Your BMI went up. How much? A lot. It's in the red now, right? It's high. Over five years. How much? How many points? Quick math this morning. I know it's early. And we ate donuts. What else do you see? 15. Thank you. I saw a hand over there. Thank you. 15.9. Good math in the morning. What else do you see? Anyone have a hand? Yes. They're the same height. They're the same height. That's good. They didn't shrink or get taller over five years. Okay. Anything else that you notice on here that's a change? Their oxygen got worse. So do you think that weight that they gained and their BMI contributed to that maybe? I don't know. I'm not a professional. Yeah. Anything else that you see? Their pulse got worse. So we can see five years. What's their overall picture of health? Bad. Yeah. Any other comments? I saw you raise your hand again. Worse. It's worse. <laughs> it's definitely worse, right? What do you think maybe contributed to this person's decline in health? So this is an employee that works for the company that I, I work for. Any guesses? Go ahead. Environment? That's a great one. What else? What could happen to a person over the course of five years of an employer? Those two years was my mention was me. And I was the director of benefits and wellness for my company. And I was not a good picture of health. And so these numbers that I showed you, I stood in front of my company and I said, how can I talk to all of you about being a good picture of health and stand here as a director of the company and tell you all that you need to do a better job with your health when I'm not? And so I showed my weight in front of 3,000 employees and said, I need to make a difference too. So that was 2018. And over the course of two years, I lost 90. So a little bit about CHG Healthcare. We are a staffing company, a provider staffing company. And these are the seven brands that we are out in the marketplace with. So if you've ever seen any of these companies, um, you probably haven't seen some of them because they're more Eastern located. Um, but CHG Healthcare employs about 1,800 people here in Salt Lake City. If the lights being off are making you a little sleepy, we can turn back on too. Um, but CHG Healthcare was founded in 1979, that's the year before I was born, so we've been around for a while. Um, and we're the largest healthcare staffing company in the US. So what we do, is we have sales recruiters that reach out to doctors and try to get them to go on assignment in different facilities. 
Sorry, guys. <laughs> Make sure that didn't happen. Hey, that's a reminder. I need to check in with my team. Okay. We have 31% market share in locum tenens revenue. Does anyone speak Latin? I didn't think so. I don't either. But what that means is locum tenens is actually we place people on assignment in temporary positions, and locum tenens means it's just like in place of. So in place of a doctor that might not be at a hospital, we put doctors there to help out. So again, we have currently 3,100 employees. We are set to add another 900 employees in our different locations across the U.S. right now. So we're headquartered right here in Midvale, Utah, and we have offices in 11 different states. Our current average age is 33. We have a 52% millennial population, 65% female, 35% male, and our most common job role is a sales recruiter. So our salespeople, they start at an average uh, base salary of $48,000. But they have the potential to make more than our CEO does a year. No joke. We have salespeople that make $2 million a year, placing doctors on temporary assignments. That's cool. It's a really hard job. <laughs> I would never want that job. But there's a lot of potential here in sales. We have been on Fortune's top 100 companies to work for for 10 years in a row because of how well we treat our people. That makes my job really difficult because I'm in charge of uh, employee benefits and I love my job because I have the responsibility of making our people's benefits and wellness programs the best. And I love what I do. At the center of that is our core values. And this is very strategically designed in place. So at the center of everything we do is putting people first. You will see this in everything that we do. It's not just a plaque on the wall. And putting people first drives all of our decisions. So we literally sit with the decision tree, and if it doesn't put people first, we don't do it. And that's really important to everything at our company. One of the ways that I put people first every year, we have an employee experience survey that goes out to all of our people. And when all of our people fill that employee experience survey out. We get all the results back, it's anonymous. And I go through and I read every single comment every year. It takes me about six hours. This year it was 35 pages. But it's the best way for me to learn what's going on in our people's lives and what they need. So if somebody says, we need a better maternity leave program, that's how I determine what I'm gonna add next year for our people's benefits. Or if people want braces for themselves and their kids, that's how I determine what I add in my benefits program. If people want music in the bathrooms, I'm not joking, people put that on our survey. If they want pellet ice in the, uh, yeah, I know. If they want pellet ice, we put pellet machines in our uh, break rooms. That's how we determine what decisions are. So it's really cool. These are all of the benefits and wellness programs that my team runs. So 50 different programs and vendors that we work with. So when you think about employee benefits, it's things like 401k, medical dental vision program. I know it's kind of like boring stuff, but when you get to be an adult, it's super important. Um, we have an on-site clinic for all of our people and their kids that's free. So if you need to go to the doctor, all you have to do is walk downstairs, and we have a clinic with five different positions on it that people can see for free. That's in all of our locations. I oversee that. When mental health started to become a really big deal to our people, and you couldn't get in to see very many people in um, the valley, there's currently a wait for kids to see a behavioral health professional if you want to get in to see a therapist right now, it's usually about a four to six month wait. This year, one of the biggest things that I rolled out for our people, um, we are currently hiring for a pediatric behavioral health therapist to be on site in our location in Salt Lake City. That's a big deal. So the great thing is with a putting people first mentality, 
I get to go to my CEO and say, did you know that there's a four to six month wait to have a therapist see your kid? No, I didn't know that, Ann. Oh, it's a big deal right now. Um, we're gonna hire a therapist, are you cool with that? I mean, I'm really making it simple, but <laughs> we get to do those kind of things as a company that I work for, and a lot of other companies don't get to do that. So within our clinic, we're gonna have a therapist that sees kids for free. It's awesome. All right, so with our program, we provide programs and resources for our people from birth to retirement. So a couple of years back, we had people on that employee experience survey that were saying, Anne, I struggle with fertility. I'm not able, my husband and I aren't able to get pregnant. And if you know anything about fertility services or you've ever heard about this, in order to get fertility coverage, it can cost anywhere from fifty to $100,000. It's really expensive. I see people nodding. People are having to pay for this out of pocket. And year over year over year, they were coming to me and saying, Anne, I'm trying to get pregnant, but I can't. And so finally, we were able to add this coverage for our people. And we had eight babies the first year that were born. Really cool stuff that I do. So we are able to be innovative, stay best in class, and remain competitive. That's my goal. That's my job. And I have one of the largest budgets in the company that I get to spend. I also have to manage it, though. So I have to make sure that we're remaining competitive, we're being innovative, and again, um, staying within budget as best as I can. I don't just get a free budget. But I get to do really great things for our people, all within that putting people first mentality. So I also have leadership responsibility, and this is one of my favorite parts of my job, is I get to grow and develop people. So I currently have a team of 10, this shows nine, because <laughs> I just added another person. Uh, but the really special thing about being a leader at CHG is I'm not a boss, I'm a leader. And there's a very big difference there. So I get to grow people. Uh, Landon on my team was right out of college. He started on my team as a temp employee doing address changes. Literally just data entry, updating people's addresses. He's on track to become a senior benefit specialist this year. And he goes out and does presentations just like I'm doing. And this year I sent him to New York um, to participate in a conference, and he's just telling the CHG story like I do. He started doing that with you guys six years ago. And he just took advantage of opportunities. Great, great development story. So I love being a leader. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. But this is just, I just wanted to show you um, the people that I lead. Uh, and uh, sorry, I was getting a little choked up there. <laughs> um, in, in the story there. So most people at CHG don't have 10 people report to them. Our average ratio is uh, one uh, leader to two to three direct reports. And that's because we want to make sure that we're able to grow our people. I have 10, <laughs> it's not normal, but it's because my team is so senior and uh, they're very autonomous. They can, they can really do their jobs well. So making a difference, I'm probably short on time, or um, not short on time, but I probably went through that too quickly. So I want to tell you a little bit about my career. So I started my career in a mailroom. I graduated high school early. I was kind of done with the high school experience. So I went through all my AP classes and I was like, I just want to get into college. So I graduated high school uh, two quarters early. And I was going to Salt Lake Community College and I started in the mailroom at a company called Principal Financial Group. And I was just opening claims, medical claims, back when there were mail rooms. Now they don't really have mail rooms anymore. And, um, at that time, my boss was a guy named Kevin Rickliffs, who is now retired recently as the Chief Cultural Officer of CHG Healthcare. And I say this because you never want to burn bridges in your career, because you never know who you're going to end up working for one day. And I never thought when I was opening mail at Principal Financial Group that one day my future Chief Cultural Officer would be my boss 15 years later. So never burn bridges in your career. Always through the unexpected, and this is really important. So one of my first jobs 
was working at Taco Bell down the street on State Street and 106. I'm sure many of you have been there, right? And I started there at 16, and I was a shift manager. You're not supposed to be a manager and have to be when you're 16 years old. And it was because I wasn't afraid to say, I will clean the bathroom anytime you want me to. And I would clean the bathroom, and they were like, who is this kid, this girl, who would clean the bathroom? And I was just like, I don't care, I'll clean the bathroom. And they eventually said, okay, she's willing to do whatever you give her. And I did. I would always stay late. I was always working until 6 p.m. on the shifts that people didn't want to do. And that was in my you know, business career. So always be willing to do the unexpected that people don't think you're gonna do. Clean the bathroom, right? Take the, the, take the time to prep. This is really important. So even though you might not be the most experienced person at the table, if your boss isn't prepared and you are, that's gonna make you look really good. So if your boss doesn't know the answer, and you do, because you took the time to press, always be ready with that answer. I had that happened so many times in my career where I took the time to prep and my boss didn't. And you're ready and you can either slip them the answer or you can say it, that makes you look really good. So always take the time to prep. Do the unexpected, okay? Observe and above all, listen. The first year that I was at CHG, I took a pay cut to go there. I took a $20,000 pay cut to go to CHG because I'd heard about the culture there. And so I was a senior claims account rep and I moved into an account rep position and I took a $20,000 pay cut to be a benefit specialist at CHG. And I knew that I was taking a step back in my career to work for somebody who was really hard-nosed but she had so much experience and I just wanted to learn from her. And so my first year there, I just sat back and watched. And I took all the notes that I could just to observe and listen from this woman. And she was the hardest boss, and I say boss for a reason, she was the hardest boss I ever worked for. And I sat back my first year and just observed because I knew she wasn't very fondly thought of, but I was going to learn a lot from her. And I didn't want to be the loudest voice in the room, I just wanted to learn. And I learned about, about a lot about how she interacted with other people. So sometimes you don't want to be the loudest voice in the room, you just want to watch and interact. Okay? So sometimes you just need to do that, just listen. So what I would say is, if you can do these things in your career, you'll get really far. And um, I think yeah, it's three minutes. Okay. So with that, um, I have some prizes for Q and A. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Any questions about benefits or CHG or anything? How many jobs have you had? Oh uh, gosh, in 25 years, a lot. <laughs> So with CHG, I think I've had five or six. Yeah. Have you had any problems with CHG? Have I had any problems with them? Not really, no. They're just a really great company to work for. Yeah. Have you ever been fired from a job? No. Yes. You, go ahead. Oh, um, how did you hear about CHG? So um, the gal who was my current boss um, before she got let go, um, the previous company that I worked for, she came in and talked about the culture there. And so when a job came up, um, that's when I took the big pay cut to go work for them. Because I heard about how great their culture was. Good question. So when you add new programs to the uh, benefits, do you have to cut other programs? And how do you decide what programs they cut? That's a bomb question. So, no. And that goes back to our culture. So the question was, how do we decide which programs to keep and which programs to cut? So with our culture, we never cut a program. And the reason why we never cut a program is we never want to take away from our people. So um, that's why we never take away. 
and when what how we decide what programs to add is based on how many people how many people we can impact so if it's just impacting a small number of people we don't um, add that yes what do you do if there's a one that like a group that isn't needed anymore there's a group that isn't needed anymore yeah like uh, something that isn't needed anymore, like, uh, say, mailroom people when it's, like, no longer need mail. 